How about a matter of first principles? You mentioned these premium yeah. increases, but they're not happening as a result of a decision by the government. Right. You were against the individual mandate yeah. during the campaign. Under this mandate, the government is forcing people to spend money, fining you if you don't. How is that not a tax? Well, hold on a second, George. Here's what's happening. You and I are both paying 900 bucks uh, on average, our families, in higher premiums because of uncompensated care. Now, what I've said is that if you can't afford health insurance, you certainly shouldn't be punished for that. That's just piling on. If, on the other hand, we're given tax credits, we've set up an exchange, you are now part of a big pool, we've driven down the costs, we've done everything we can, and you actually can afford health insurance, but you've just decided, you know what, I want to take my chances. And then you get hit by a bus, and you and I have to pay for the emergency that room That may care. be, but it's still that's, a tax that, increase. That, that, no, no that, that, that's not true, George. The, for us to say that you've got to take a responsibility to get health insurance, is absolutely not a tax increase. What it's saying is, is that we're not going to have other people carrying your burdens for you. Any more than the fact that right now everybody in America just about has to get auto insurance. Nobody considers that a tax increase. People say to themselves, that is a fair way to make sure that if you hit my car, that but, I'm not covering all the costs. But it may be fair it may be good public policy no but but George you, you can't just make up that language and decide that that's called a tax increase any more what, what if I if I say that right now uh, your premiums are going to be going up uh, by five or eight or ten percent next year and you say well that's not a tax increase uh, but on the other hand if I say that I don't want to have to pay for you not carrying coverage even after I give you tax credits that make it affordable then I, I don't think I'm making it up. Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Tax, a charge usually of money imposed by authority on persons or property <laughs> for public purposes. George, the fact that you looked up Merriam's dictionary, the, the definition of tax increase indicates to me that you're stretching a little bit right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gone to the dictionary to check on well, the definition. Well, no, I mean, what, if what you're saying I is... I wanted to check for myself, but your critics say it is a tax increase. Uh, my critics say everything's a tax increase. My critics say that I'm taking over... Uh, every sector of the economy. You know that. Uh, look, we can have a legitimate debate about whether or not we're going to have an individual mandate or not. But, but you reject that it's a tax I increase. absolutely reject that notion. including uh, what they call the cooperative uh, option, uh, a series of uh, health insurance cooperatives that wouldn't be the public option, but would be some, something in between. Is, that, is he going to get into a detail like that and say he likes that idea? He will acknowledge the fact that, that, that there is that idea. There's the idea of putting a trigger on the public option so it goes into effect uh, uh, at some date when it's clear that, there, that a market is uncompetitive. There are a number uh, of ideas, but what is very important is that we have uh, the kind of competition and choice that will help consumers. In many states in this country, there's one insurer that dominates the entire uh, market. In Alabama, one insurer dominates 87 percent. In, in North Dakota, there's one insurer that dominates so why not break down the, why not break down the state barriers and let all of these insurance companies compete nationally uh, without having to simply focus in on a state by state basis because uh, we are trying to do this in a way that advances the uh, the interests of consumers without creating such disruption uh, and, uh, that it uh, uh, makes it difficult to Why would that uh, be disruptive forward? if Blue Cross and Blue Shield or United Healthcare or all of these big insurance companies, they don't have to worry about uh, just working in a state and they could just have uh, the opportunity to compete in all 50 states? But insurance is regulated at, the, at this time. But you could change stay, that. You, stay, the, president could stay propose, by state. the president could propose a law that changing not, that. That is not uh, endemic to the uh, the kind of reforms that uh, we're proposing, or that uh, Why not? Why we, not? Uh, we think we're, we're proposing a package that we believe will 
bring that stability and security to people, will help people get insurance, will be, uh, will lower the cost, and, and with that, that can pass the Congress. And uh, that has to be the test. We're not into uh, uh, a symbolic ex uh, uh, expedition here. We're trying to bring real relief to uh, hardworking middle class people in this country. We believe the plan that we've outlined will do that. Because I want to move on, but if the president wanted great competition, greater competition, he could say, let's change the law and let these health insurance companies compete nationally. I'm not sure, Wolf, that that would, uh, that that would uh, end the debate that uh, you asked me about in the first place. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the idea that he's proposed will promote that. Others have other ideas, but they are not central. What's central here is that we get fundamental insurance reforms that will protect people, put a cap on their out-of-pocket expenses if they have pre-existing conditions, make sure they get insurance if they get sick, make sure they don't get dropped off insurance, and creates a pool where people who can't get insurance today, you know, if you you don't have insurance through your employer, it costs you three times as much uh, to get insurance today. Most people can't afford it. Most small, small businesses can't afford to insure uh, their employees. A lot of people won't start a small business because they can't leave their insurance. Our plan would help cope with that. Because that's what he wants everybody to believe his is. I'm going to ask this question that I asked yesterday. I want you to stop and think about something. Name for me a major government program in the modern era say so let's go to the uh, let's including the 20th century start with fdr name one that has not exceeded cost projections that is not in bankruptcy or near bankruptcy name one that has saved money name a government program that actually reduced taxes in order to make the program happen name for me one instance where any major government program has accomplished its objective name for me one government program which in fact has destroyed many of the people that is trying to help but i can answer that that's almost all of them Name for me a government program that has not wreaked havoc on the people that wanted to help. You can start with the war on poverty. You can start with Social Security. You can start with Medicare, Medicaid. You can start with um, uh, the Great Society.